So, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year again. Mercury is about to go retrograde tomorrow, 13th. And almost till 3rd or 4th November, he will be retrograde. And this time he is retrograde in the sign of Libra. And this is a very interesting transit. I had made a video on Mercury transit into uh, Libra before, but many of you said that you liked that video very much and you wanted me to make a separate video on retrogression. So, what's retrogression and what is retrogression of Mercury? Retrograde uh, means, I have seen in my experience, one of the two things happen. Something which you had planned to do earlier, but you did not do, now is the time you complete that. Or, you start something now, but then you are confused. How should you go around? So therefore, either of the two things happen when Mercury goes retrograde. So there are some standard protocols when you say that uh, Mercury goes retrograde. You know? so, so some standard things happen irrespective of the sign. So for example, uh, the first thing that happens is some of your gadgets may not function that properly. And uh, some of your uh, equipments or some like your fan, your AC, anything, your mobile, laptop, anything, or your car also, I've seen, may not function properly. And then uh, the second thing that always happens is your, uh, you will get connected with uh, one of your friends from the past. And it's, it's very funny actually, uh, one of my childhood friends, he, he's here in Guwahati and I've reached my home after a seven day voluntary quarantine uh, in my hotel and um, he just uh, called me up today and he said, uh, I, I was thinking, where are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, yes, I'm here, so maybe we'll meet in, in, in the next, next weekend. So there you see, uh, it happens automatically, you don't have to do anything, it's like, you're like a puppet dancing uh, in front of the planets. So, this is something which is very usually seen. And some miscommunications could also be there. So, these are standard uh, principles which apply to every retrograde, which happens thrice or even sometimes four times a year. So, then how do you differentiate this transit uh, of Mercury, which is going to be retrograde, from the previous transit of Mercury, which was retrograde? So do you feel that all the retrograde uh, Mercury transits, they are the same? There's no difference? Well, absolutely not. There's a, a lot of difference uh, between every Mercury retrograde. And how do you decide? That? What is that difference? Well, the difference is primarily to do with the sign. So for example, if Mercury is retrograde in Libra, uh, the nature of things that will happen will be more Venusian type because Venus lords Libra, and if Mercury goes retrograde in uh, Gemini or uh, Virgo, then the things will be related to more of Mercury than any other planet because these two are ordered by Mercury. So I have always seen when Mercury goes retrograde in some sign, in one of the signs ruled by Jupiter, which is uh, Sagittarius or Pisces. I have seen always there, there are some clash related to ideals because Jupiter represents your ideals, what you stand for in life, what you think is right, what you think is not right, okay? now, what you think should be done, what you think should not be done. So when Mercury goes retrograde in uh, Sagittarius or Pisces, then this happens. Now he's getting retrograde in the sign of uh, Libra, right? So let's discuss a bit on that. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then uh, please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me uh, regarding your career or marriage or health, then please go to my website down below in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So what's Libra? Libra, as I said in my last video, Libra is the moon's gold sign of Venus. So, now what does it mean when you say Moon Tricone? Moon Tricone means what exactly the planet stands for. And now when, when Mercury moves into this uh, sign of Libra, he tends to take a Venusian approach to things. And I said uh, in that last video that what, what, what is Venusian approach? See, Mercury is a very calculative planet. And that is why Venus gets debilitated in the sign of Virgo. 
love and calculation don't go well together okay so therefore the thing is when you take a standard mercurial approach what would happen is you will be thinking of profit loss you know plus minus and that's it oh i'll profit if i go here i'll profit if i go there now every planet wants profit everybody wants profit but what I, what i'm trying to say is it's based on short term negotiations mercury is not a very long term planet you know Uh, he's a he's a planet which shows uh, negotiations and dealings which we need to or which we want to do in the short term, not in the long run. So therefore, now when he uh, goes into Libra, he tends to take an approach which will give him fulfillment in the long run, not in the short term, of course. That could also happen depending on your horoscope. But what does it mean, long term approach? Long term means, so for example. if uh, if you would if you had some problems with somebody when it comes to your uh, houses which mercury rules in the chart so this retrograde will behave differently for everyone so if mercury is your 10th lord then it can show some issues with your boss or some other person or if mercury is your 7th lord that can show your spouse so now when mercury goes to libra you have to negotiate with them in such a way that they feel see there's a saying you know what is the best form of negotiation the best way the best outcome of any negotiation is when both the parties leave the table with some dissatisfaction so i repeat the best negotiation is when two parties on the other side of the table leave with some dissatisfaction <laughs> why do i say this because if one party says oh i am totally happy uh, with the negotiation and the other party says oh i am also totally happy then what kind of a negotiation that is right uh, now you uh, you could say oh it's a win win situation but even if it's a win win situation in the material world there will be some facets which one party will not agree to and then there will be some other facets which the other party doesn't agree to so that's what the sign of libra is but venus is a very different planet you know venus is much more smarter than mercury now people think that mercury is a very smart planet he knows how to get things done but if you check uh, mercury represents your friends but venus represents your spouse okay it is 1000 million times difficult to deal with your uh, spouse than to and it's very easy, it's relatively much easier to deal with your friends and you know with your relatives especially why do i say this because your spouse is aware of all of your weaknesses and you are aware of that person's weakness so venus puts you in a vulnerable situation where you you could if you wish exploit the weakness of your spouse is there are tamasic people who do that in kaliyuga but uh, mercury uh, mercury can be a bit superficial sometimes like relatives you meet them sometimes friends you meet them sometimes you could still pretend to be a good person in front of your friends and your relatives but you can't do that with your spouse you are totally exposed so therefore it is much more difficult to uh, deal with venus which means it requires much more uh, how do i say this um, good karma to have a good venus than to have a good mercury okay? because now it's 24 hours with your spouse <laughs> so therefore this means that now when mercury goes retrograde in the sign of libra then you have to understand that you may uh, now it it could happen as i said depending on the house which mercury rules in your chart or house says because mercury rules two signs so you have to behave as if that person is like your spouse now how do you behave like that uh huh interesting you have to you have to think as if that person will stay in my life for eternity till the till my last moment okay so that's how you know uh, that this mercury is retrogression to behave so for example if mercury rules your uh, 10th house as i said or 9th house so 9th house could be your father your guru or your counselor or guide so if you have some problem then now uh, you have to you have to think don't think that this guide is there only now you have to think how will i deal with this person if i have to stay with this person for the rest of my life how in the universe will i behave if this person was my spouse 
would I behave like this? Would I speak in a way? Uh, would I speak like this? Or would I behave like this? Would I do this? Would I not do that? Right? Imagine that this person is staying lifelong. So how would you behave? Ask that question to yourself. Yeah. Once you ask that question, then you will know that yes, this is how I have to behave. Yeah. So behave properly. That is the mantra for this funding. And when it goes retrograde, it means that uh, it, it could happen that some factor or some facets of the negotiation uh, which you agree to that now the other person may not agree or something which uh, you, you you did not agree now uh, now that person may say okay if that's your wish then I will fulfill it. Okay? So it could go the other way around but the most important thing is you have to think as if this person will be there uh, lifelong and I will have to stay with that person all the time. Okay? So don't think that Mercury is now in Libra and after you know sometime he will go back to Scorpio and then again to Sagittarius. No, don't think like this. It's very important that you harmonize with these energies. And now Sun will also join Mercury from 15th, 16th around that time of October. And he'll be there till 15 November approach. And Sun will be in debility. Okay. So this transit could give you a feeling that in the short term you are losing out in life okay because the ego the sun is uh, feeling as if he's compromising his ideals but believe me if you behave the right way you will make great gains in the long run all right so therefore this transit is very crucial so that you sit in the table and you try to understand that what are the things that i need to do if i if suppose this person would stay lifelong, okay, would I just behave the way that I did? And this is this retrovation is a great time to correct your mistakes. Okay? So if you have done something wrong with somebody, which either you feel was wrong or either they feel was not right, then you can please go and apologize. Okay? That's what you can always do. That's what and if somebody else comes back to you, then do not uh, try your best, uh, even if your worst enemy comes and apologizes to you, then try your best. Uh, of course, it's easier said than done, but try your best to at least forgive the person externally, if you, even if you cannot forgive the person internally, but try your best if you can forgive him or her uh, externally at least, okay? Or at least give up the grudges. You will, you will see that some sometimes people really, they genuinely feel that they've done a mistake and then they come and beg for forgiveness. So, Therefore, if that happens, then uh, do not uh, do not bereft yourself from the opportunity to forgive others. And if you have you feel that you have done something very crazy with somebody, or at least you spoke badly, or you do not behave properly, then now is the time to get back to that person because now that person will also most likely understand you and try to understand that you, your perspective, things from your perspective. In that case, you will realize that that person has for, has attended. That person is likely to forgive me, and then similarly, I should also forgive others because they say, "God forgives those who forgives others." <laughs> All right, because if we do not forgive others, we cannot expect that God will, you know, forgive us. Life will forgive us. Karma will forgive us. We should never expect that. All right. Because it's very easy to be arrogant and stupid these days in Pali Whites all, all around the place. But it really takes a man or a woman of substance to really accept the fact that yes, this is happening to me because of my own karma. Because Lord Brahma says uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's a very, very, very famous verse. Namaste one who accepts the difficulties that he endures in his life as a part of his own karma and does not blame anybody else. Liberation is his rightful claim. Lord Brahma is defining. He's is offering this prayer to Lord Krishna. That one who accepts this, the difficulties and challenges as one's own karma. This is there in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is also the shloka which you will find in my website. This is the shloka I mentioned in my website. Because this shloka, if you can imbibe and follow in your life, 90% of your problems with other people will be solved. Okay, This person did something wrong to me it, because it was my own karma. 
I am responsible. Nobody else in this world is responsible for my suffering. Is it? It's me. Okay. No planet, no graha, no devata, no god, no dev, no rishi, nobody, not other human beings, no damn being is responsible except me. All right. That will be all from my side. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And my consultations are also down below through my website. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and forgive others. Then he will also forgive you. All right. Thank you very much.